Okay, we'll watch the original video for a reminder because it's not very long and then we'll go into her replies because I find them fascinating. Look, finding love is hard. I know it is, but at the same time, like you have so much power when it comes to finding a soulmate as well as luck. Luck has to play into it because like you never know if you're gonna run into them. So the only thing you can ever do is work on yourself and make sure that you're a happy, healthy, kind person and that you'll be prepared to meet that soulmate but ultimately you might never run into them. And that's just the reality of life, right? Unless you want to settle. I was rejected by a matchmaker this week. You wouldn't be able to work with me. When we met, I told her what I was looking for and told her a lot about me. And I tried to highlight some of my core qualities, including the fact that I'm very, very type A organized, I like to be the leader. I told her the types of things that I like doing. I also told her I was looking for a man who was also a leader because I don't want to always be the leader, believe it or not. I told her I was looking for someone that was- By the way, I don't know if I commented this when I talked about her originally, but a lot of modern women have this mentality and a lot of men don't understand it. Just because she doesn't want to be in control all of the time doesn't mean she wants to be not in control all of the time. Do you get what I'm saying? It's like people do this black and white thinking and it's also not about being in control or not. It's about having a partner that's competent to like handle stuff when you're tired. So I think this idea of like who's in control, who's not in control, it's more like who's the default partner in moments to lead and like leading should be done by the person who's most capable and you're not 100% always capable. Even if you're the most amazing man, amazing person, there's a Samantha Jones on Sex and the City episode about this. Like you get sick. You're gonna get sick. You're gonna need help. You're gonna have moments. And so it's, you know, it's about having a partner that's competent instead of having a partner who's quote in control. Was at or above the same income level as me. Driven. This is a problem. Having somebody who's at the same income level as you, I think is like a really shallow requirement versus just saying somebody with a good job. Because like, what if she makes more than a teacher? What, you're not gonna date a teacher? That's kind of shallow. Like, why wouldn't you date a teacher, right? I always use teachers as an example just because they make less than they probably should. And so a lot of people will say that. Like, I need somebody who makes my income or more. But, like, what if you make six figures and you're dating a teacher who just started out their career? Like, you're not going to date a teacher? Like, that's kind of – that's a bad sign. I feel like it's a bad sign if you wouldn't date a teacher because they don't make enough. I feel like you better be really wealthy to be that snobby who is ambitious, who is ready for a long-term relationship. And to be fair, some teachers are ambitious and some teachers are just sweet as beans. Because like, what does ambition mean? Sometimes it can mean like putting all of your effort into your job and your career. And that doesn't, you can be a great teacher and not be ambitious, right? So like sometimes when people say like, I want a really ambitious person, what they mean is I want a really rich person. So I don't know if that's what she means, but she sounds like it ready to get married. She may have actually picked up on the fact that I'm a little high strung. I'm not like a stressed out or anxious person. See, is this a troll? Now I wonder if it's a troll because obviously you're high strung. I'm just high energy or type A. This is who I am. And she was asking me, do I meditate? No. Do I journal? No. Do anything? Woo. And I said, no. So in fact, I'm not even on the same planet as woo. When talking about what I didn't like, in a man, I said I could never really be with a beta type man. I specifically used the word doormat. I said I would chew them up and spit them out. And her response was, well, I married that type of man. She was saying that, you know, men really like a soft one. And again, I don't think this matchmaker married a man she would call a doormat because calling your partner a doormat is, in my opinion, abuse. You mean passive or less focused on being in control or slash in charge slash not interested slash chill? woman and I should try some of these vision board journaling meditating type of things would never be that type of person she also said that she could sense I had some walls up which of course I'm coming to meet a woman who I'm asking to find my future husband at the rate of several thousand dollars I have we did watch this before I'm just giving context because I'm about to show you follow-ups and in case anybody missed it it's not a long video we can watch it again of course, I'm going to be here really just trying to interview you, my dear friend, because I want to know if I'm going to get my money's worth with you. So of course, I'm going to have some walls up. I also think it's perfectly normal to have some walls up 
when you are meeting someone for the very first time and who also had not taken the time to do her own research on me by stalking me on the internet. She definitely- Her language is very interesting too, right? Like the language is interesting. She like expects a few things out of people. She doesn't like meet people where they're at, not even her matchmaker. I didn't have time because she asked for my- And again, she could be faking because her reactions are very interesting. Socials, no more than one hour before our meeting. So I asked her if she thought I would be ready for her services, her response, she essentially said that I am not ready for her type of services because I have too much work to do. My walls are too high and I'm not ready for a long-term committed relationship at the ripe age of 38 where I have been in therapy for 10 plus years. She also said that I she's too woo for me, which I can accept that, that's fine. However, I shouldn't need to be a woo type person to be worthy of love. I feel like love is literally so woo woo, which I said before when we reviewed this. I feel like what is not woo woo about love? Love is a construct we create from the feelings we get and it's not tangible, even though we think action is tangible and that's kind of true. It's always, it's not always because even the way she's talking about love, like what does love have to do with how much your partner makes? You know what I mean? If you really believe in love as an idea, like it's kind of woo woo in a way. She also said that I need to soften a little bit and men like a softer woman. Essentially, I spent 350. Well, men, she's most likely pursuing, you know, to an extent. One of my callers today, he made me laugh so hard. He goes, hey, Brittany, remember when you were telling me you want like a country blue collar guy because you find them attractive? I was like, I find everybody attractive, but so funny now. He's like, girl, it's like they don't even have time to like meditate or think about philosophy. You think some guy who's working a construction job is also spending time thinking about philosophy? I was like, some could be. And he was like, yeah, but like generally speaking, I was like, well, maybe not. I don't know. Like obviously, like if you're too busy – surviving maybe not but I of course some obviously but it was kind of funny we were laughing about it because you know even though I like all types of people there's a specific category of people that would have the same time and hobby and dedicate enough like of their time and work for the privilege to have that time to be thinking about philosophy and introspection and woo woo stuff you know what I mean like she doesn't have time to she can't even meditate girl she can't even meditate and like you know what I mean like What's attractive about a person who can't meditate? Nothing. $50 to meet with this woman. Have her tell me I am not worthy of love as I am, but the fact that I need to change in order to be worthy of love and partnership, which honestly, I think for that reason alone, she should have her matchmaking license taken away because. I mean, do serial killers and rapists need to change to maybe think about being worthy of love or no? Do people who commit domestic violence, like do people who like emotionally abuse, like we all have things we have to change. I never did any of those things and I still have plenty of things to change to be a partner that was like healthy for a future partner. Like we all have to change. We all have to work on ourselves. All of us. Not you. Not just you. All of us. We shouldn't be pushing on these narratives that people are not worthy as they are. And essentially telling- If only. And worthy is the wrong word. Again, if you held a mirror up to yourself, right- <laughs> like she shouldn't be defined by a partner. If she's truly happy with what she has, then like what does she need a partner for? Right? It sounds like she needs a partner to fulfill, fulfill herself, right? Telling women that they, the type of woman they are isn't worthy of love. That is a narrative that should not be given to anyone or it is dangerous commentary. And the fact that she said this to my face had some audacity. Well, we're celebrating my 38th birthday tonight. And we are going to wash all of what she said aside. I am so excited. She's such a stereotype of like the single older woman who can't get a man because she's unbearable, which is like so rip, like so like rest in peace, my girl, like rest in peace to your reputation. But everyone, someone's got to fit into that category right now. Thank you, Miss Fishy said, I thought about this and I find it so funny. You thought you were going to end up with a farmer mask guy. Your actual partner makes so much more sense. I mean, literally makes so much more sense. But I think I ran into even slightly like toxic thinking like she did, thinking I'm so dominant, I'm so aggressive, like I want a partner who um, is also like that. But then I made the mistake of realizing like I need a partner that's chill. And if they're – no matter what that comes in, like they have to be chill because like I'm 80% chill, bro. And I, she has like no chill. This girl has like maybe 5% chill. And so I would say like our chill levels have to match – and I think if I dated somebody who was like hyper competitive, uh, there would be no chill in the relationship. You know what I mean? 
I just feel like that's probably more accurate. And my, my partner and I also negotiated not to compete with each other because we're both competitive in our own ways where and we don't want to compete with each other. Um, and we're also not threatened by one another. I was actually my caller and I had talked about this, how I was having trouble dating American men, how they were always in competition with me. And I was like, I don't want to be in competition with my partner and my bro. But they felt like I've literally had men tell me, like, you're not going to respect me unless I make more money than you. And I was like, what does money have to do with love, bro? Like, I'm not that kind of person. I'm not that kind of I'm not this woman. I'm not a woman who would say you need to make as much as me or more. I would never think that there's no reason that would ever be a part of Britney's schema as a person. Right. That just like is so weird to me to think that that's just not who I am as a human. So the fact that somebody would think that I would think that means they don't see me. And that's why, like, I ended up in the marriage I'm in because, like, my guy isn't threatened by my, like, career. He's not threatened by my choices. He's not threatened by my success. But he's also not American. And it just doesn't matter to him. Like, he also is just like, we'll do whatever it takes. We're a team. But American men wanted to be in competition with me, bros. Okay, now, check this out. Her reply, starting with, blah, blah, blah. I saved so many videos to show you guys. Oh, my God. Back from the beach. And this comment was the hot topic. She didn't say you weren't worthy. She said you weren't ready. Amen, sis. Of conversation, you're not ready for a relationship. Put up thousands of times on my viral video. And I have- Ooh, wait, Discord says, do you think people who are interested in philosophy are usually readers as well? No, not really. I think they're curious in researchers. I don't think they're readers because that has a certain connotation, but I think they're curious and I think they're researchers. Does that make sense? I think to be into philosophy, you have to be curious. You have to want information. And the way you gather that information is your desire to like research, right? Not necessarily read. Um, so personally, I think it's less about actually reading, right? And more about like consuming information. I have a few questions about it. This idea of not being ready and telling somebody else they're not ready is thrown around a lot. And I want to know. What are the qualifiers of being ready? Is it not enough for me to say I'm ready to be in a relationship? That's a great question. Is it not enough for her to say she would like to be in a relationship? And I would say, no, it's not enough. Because, you know, I, I, if you wanted to be healthy, if you, you know, the desire to be loved is good, right? The desire to be seen is wonderful. The desire to want a partner is great. But being ready for a relationship is the same as being a parent. I think there's a time when you're probably more ready to be a parent than less ready, even though, you know, most people are just have it and figure it out. You can do that too. But I actually do think there is technically a right time to be a parent. And I know people say there's no right time to be a parent, but I don't really believe that. But that's like a philosophy difference, right? That's a values difference. So I do think there's a time when you're ready to be a partner. And what we mean by that is a healthy partner, an actual teammate, not just somebody who does you know what I mean just like she's talking about something different is it not enough to know internally that I'm ready and willing to show up for somebody else in a relationship this is the big question how is it possible I can be ready for a friendship but not ready for a romantic relationship it ding 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 red flags flying high the red flags are flying by literally what this is why I say y'all better know the differences between your friends and your boyfriends, your friends and your girlfriends. Miss ma'am, is this a troll? Am I being trolled? She's pretty. She's cute. She seems like put together. What is that? Why are you out here treating your friends like your family, bros? Not family. That's the wrong word. Sorry. Lovers. <laughs> no, wait. Wrong word. Friends and partners, life partners. I just, fought, you know, reviewed that Khadijah video. And that's the main question of that video, right? Like, should you love your partners or your friends more than one another? Should you love them the same, right? And again, everyone can do it their own way. But could you imagine the kind of man that she's looking for who's not going to desire somebody who is sort of ready for a relationship versus a friendship? Like if your friendships and your relationships are so similar, then girl, what do you need a boyfriend for? It just feels silly to compare friends and like partners. You know what I mean? No offense. If I went up to somebody and said, I want to be friends with you, but you're not ready. Here's a list of 10 things you need to change about yourself in order to be ready for a friend. I mean, that's called boundaries, but that's also called like, yeah. Yeah, some people aren't ready to be a good friend to you. Have you never had a bad friend? Like some people aren't ready to be a good friend, a healthy friend. Again, healthy, 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 healthy. 
Lots of people are ready to be your boyfriends and girlfriends. Lots of people are ready to be your partners. Lots of people are ready to be your friends. Not everyone's ready to be a healthy partner or a healthy friend. Now, is she trolling us? Is this a fake? Is she, does she know this is going to get her famous? Do you know what I mean? Is she doing this to piss us off? Friendship with me. That would be insane. How is it any different? How are we? Also, she has nice arms. She works out. Judging others about their readiness, worthiness, whether they're deserving to be in a loving relationship any different than a friendship. I do not see the difference. Instead, we embrace friendships and say, hey, I wanna be your friend. I'm going to embrace you with your flaws. We can grow together and challenge each other. That is no different than a romantic relationship. I think people in the comments are getting the word compatible confused with ready because we can go up to somebody, build a friendship or romantic relationship with them, and then three months in decide maybe our flaws are not compatible, our challenges are not compatible, our strengths are not compatible, and go our separate ways. That doesn't mean we are not ready in general for a relationship or a friendship. It just means we're not compatible with that person, and that's... Yes, I agree that compatibility and being ready for a relationship are different. But again... It's like, it's like Boogie. You give him feedback and it's like not, you know what I mean? It's not computing. It's like people, some people you give them feedback and it goes whoop, whoop, whoop. And it's so interesting. So like she doesn't have to take the advice. She doesn't have to take the feedback. You know what I mean? Like everyone has a different, like a different line for when they feel ready or like they've done the work. And again, everyone's line is different. So if she's not meeting anyone compatible with her line, a matchmaker tells her, like, you're not ready. The internet, a part of it, is saying, like, hmm, you don't seem ready. Maybe it's just a bubble she's in. Maybe we're wrong. Maybe she's right. I don't know. But she feels not ready. You know, she's been talking about her dating problems for years. Stop. Wait, her or somebody else? Wait. Stacy, who you talk about? Who are you talking about? Wait, oh my gosh, just coming in and I know this girl used to buy, what is that? La Loro? What is that? What is that? Why can't I say that word? From her and before I realized had bad MLMs are. Oh my God, wait, is she an MLMer? Because she seems like one in my head. Wait, do you really know this girl? Yes, she was my local Lulu, Lula dealer. What's a Lula? Lula. Then she left when the company started going down in flames. Now she does like advertising, consulting. She's been, she's always been single. Honestly, she looks like that bubble. She's been talking about dating problems for years. Mmm, interesting. Danielle, yeah, that's Danielle Fewings. I mean, she seems like the type, honestly. She does have that vibe, right? That's so interesting. Lulero. Lulero? Lule what is that? Lula? What is it? What is it? I don't even know what that is. But yeah, that kind of makes sense. That's so interesting. Maddox says she's taking, quote, you're not ready for this type of thing to you're not enough to actually be invested in or on, which feels like she knows she, she's just degrading stuff. So it's to her level. Well, I think like the problem is, is like she's not having a relationship with herself enough to be open to the fact that people are giving her like a mirror and I understand that like it's like it's totally fine but also what an opportunity missed you like again we go back to yesterday's stream you can try to help people by giving them tools but whether or not they use it it won't you're so dyslexic it hurts I can't read that word I just like can't read it delulu ho delulu 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 ho what you guys suck it's clothing. Lululemon. Did I get it right? <laughs> it's totally okay. But to say that somebody is not ready for a relationship, but people are okay out there having friendships and building all other sorts of work relationships, family relationships, but saying, oh, but that, but a romantic relationship, you're not allowed to have that because there are people on the internet that think you're not ready. Get to a point where we can only grow so much as a single person. We need people in our lives to push us and challenge us. We do that and grow in romance and friendships. We cannot just go through life alone. So these relationships are required to continue to pursue our growth. Maybe that's the woo everyone's missing. 
So at the end of the day, my comments are open. Tell me how being ready for a romantic relationship is different than being. Oh, see, is she is she doing a business move? Is she literally trolling us? See, 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 see. She's like, my comments are open, which is good engagement. That's good engagement. Is she doing that to get us to engage? I know Lululemon's a different company. I was making a joke. Ready for a friendship. How is being worthy of friendship any different than being worthy of a romantic relationship? Back from the beach. Okay, so that's one of them. Then here's this Wow, one. that last video got really- Said not everyone is worthy of love. I mean, what is love? Baby, don't hurt me no more. I mean, everyone is loved because everyone is us and we're all living creatures on this planet. But outside of philosophy, love in terms of romantic relationships, yes, not everybody is worthy of being partnered in a healthy sense, right? Because some people out here graping people, some people out here murdering people, some people out here emotionally abusing their partners. And I have a feeling she emotionally abuses her partners because it sounds like she emotionally abuses herself by denying herself agency and introspection crazy in the comments and this is exactly the point that I was trying to make that is toxic the idea that anyone is not worthy or deserving of like when normies say this what are they saying please somebody in the audience are one of you a normie when normies say of course everyone's worthy of love like who are they talking about like please somebody who's normal in the comments tell me because like I'm no Obviously not. Like, what does that mean? Of course, from human to human, we're all like worthy of love, like even Hitler. But outside of philosophy, absolutely not. Like, what are we talking about? What do normies mean when they say this? Right? Like, that's what I want to know. Like, when normies say like, everyone's worthy of love, like, yes. And it's like a philosophy. But she's not woo-woo, so she can't say this. Only woo-woo people can say everyone's worthy of love because it's a woo-woo philosophy to say everyone is worthy of love. When normies say it, like, what are they possibly saying? They don't mean that. They're lying. Love as they are in their form at this moment. Actually, wait, Magic Dragon's right. They're only thinking of themselves. I believe that. There's there's no way they're not just thinking of themselves. It, this is entitled Normie Cope. I think it might be. It is toxic. And... Yes, everybody needs to work on themselves, everyone needs to adjust, and everyone needs to grow. But saying that somebody is not worthy or deserving or ready for love as they are today is 100% toxic and I think is harmful conversation and a narrative that needs to be wiped. Wow, that last video. Wow, super, yeah, just silly, right? It was like crazy, but also not like insane crazy, but also like traumatized crazy. Like, it's kind of insane. Have y'all not heard of outsourcing? It says, girl, there's a reason why you had to pay someone to try helping you find a husband in the first place. It's like kind of true, but also not kind of true. For her, it's obvious why she needed a matchmaker. But for other people, it's just good business. But she is the category of person that hires a matchmaker because she's desperate, not because it's efficient, in my opinion. Right? Right? That's what I think, right? Mariah says she wants a golden retriever boyfriend to bank orders and sh and she's annoyed it ain't happening, but she's afraid of the golden retriever man because she's afraid she'll step all over him. So she wants an alpha guy, but the alpha guys don't want alpha women. And then nobody, no kind, considerate soul wants a person like this, right? Like healthy people don't date unhealthy people. Uh, once they realize they're unhealthy, unless they're trying to save them. But even that's unhealthy because you think you can save people <laughs> like that. That's the catch 22. If you're a healthy person who happens to fall in love with an unhealthy person without realizing they're unhealthy, once you realize they're unhealthy, you have to make the decision if you're going to stay in an unhealthy relationship, which in what in many ways makes you unhealthy because you're staying for a reason, right? You're staying because you can think you can fix them unhealthy. You're staying because you're living for their potential unhealthy. You're staying because maybe in a healthy way, you're there for the good and the bad and the ugly. But if you know in your heart of hearts they'll never get healthy, then you are consenting to always being in an unhealthy relationship, right? Unless you are staying in a relationship that is unhealthy because you know for a fact that that person is going to choose to be healthy, they're just going through it right now, then you are consenting to a lifelong relationship with someone who's unhealthy, i.e. an unhealthy relationship, i.e. making yourself unhealthy, in my opinion. Y'all, I'm a busy working professional. I outsource cleaning my house. Exactly. I mostly unattractive to most guys she's asking to date, right? Like, unless you're like, what kind of a guy? Let's play the game. 
She wants a guy who makes her amount or more. She wants a guy who's dominant and in control. She wants to also be dominant and in control. Who's the guy for her? A politician? Maybe. I think a politician might be it, right? She's probably too hyper independent to relax enough to be vulnerable and open to love. You know, that was one of my toxic traits in my 20s. One of my toxic traits in my 20s before therapy was absolutely using hyper independence and individuality to kind of put up walls and escape the opportunities to be vulnerable with people. And only after I like got my heart broken a few times and learned to be vulnerable, I learned how to be healthy and vulnerable, which was much different than being toxic and vulnerable and much different than being toxic and hyper independent. So I think she probably is suffering from that. She has her walls up. She's, you know, probably had a really hard life trying to compete with men. But at the same time, like, what's the, like, again, I'm trying to think of like, what's the guy that would date her, right? Like, what is it? A WWE wrestler? They don't make that much. They don't make enough. She wants a celebrity. Maybe she does kind of think she like needs a celebrity, right? Outsource grocery shopping. Bringing me dinner. Thank you, Uber Eats. Why would I not outsource this? Do you not know how much freaking time it takes? Well, to maybe that's it though. She doesn't feed herself. She doesn't clean for herself. Does she, has she ever done it? Like, I know this sounds really woo woo. So she probably won't accept this. But actually like feeding yourself and cooking for yourself is a form of self-love and intimacy. Cleaning your own home is a self form of love and intimacy. You don't have to do it all the time and you don't have to do all things. I'm just giving examples. If you outsource everything in your life, what are you ever doing to show love to yourself, right? Maybe it's working out for her. Maybe it's making money. But my my philosophy in life, this is Brittany's personal philosophy, is like when you, for me, it's cooking. So it's not cleaning. It's not anything else. It's cooking. When I cook for myself, I'm self-loving. I'm saying you are worthy of good food. You're worthy of a home-cooked meal. You're worthy of something you made with your own hands. That's my version. So what would be her version? Maybe it's working out. Maybe it's other things. My concern is that if she's outsourcing everything to somebody else, what does she ever do for herself? Does she even dress for herself? Does she stay in shape for herself? You know what I mean? The one thing I do for myself is I cook for myself. Even though my partner's happy to cook for me, I cook for myself a lot of the time because it is my time to shut off my brain and do my own thing. You know, it's kind of funny because I every time I think about somebody else cooking for me, I like think it will work. And then I'm like, well, when am I ever going to show love to myself? Like, when am I going to do that? You know, and everyone has a different version of this. So what is the thing that this woman is probably doing for herself that's really for herself, you know? Swipe, 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 swipe. Oh, match. Now I got to have these meaningless conversations on a dating app mm. only to find out that someone's not looking for something serious. Then I go on a couple of dates with somebody who says they're looking for something oh. serious. You know how the red pillars are always like... um Women have their pick of the litter. No woman would ever be single. All the dating apps work for women. Not all women, bros. That's what I'm saying. Not every woman out here is is in a relationship, guys. A lot of women are single. A lot of pretty women are single. A lot of different kinds of women are single. A lot of people who desire to be stay-at-home moms are single. Lots of women are single in the world. And I don't know what this narrative is that women aren't struggling in dating. Lots of women are struggling for probably the same reason men are. To some extent, they're not ready. But they actually or they haven't found their partner, right? Both are good reasons to be single. You're not ready or you haven't found your partner. Both are valid reasons to be single. They are not really. They're truly just looking to hook up. So they did a little <sighs> bait and switch. And then maybe you go on a few dates with somebody who is looking for something serious. And then all of a sudden, three weeks in, four weeks in, you're dating and work's gotten really busy. And all of a sudden now they have no time for dating. Why would I not outsource this front end part of seeking out a future partner that is so time consuming and so meaningless. There's no building intimacy. There's no building connection at that part at that point. It's all just the sourcing of potential suitors. Why would I not outsource that when I have the resources available to do so? And yes, for sure, matchmakers will source within their existing network to find you someone. If most of the matchmakers I've now spoken to have explained that if they don't have anyone in their network, they are going to go out and do the search for you, meaning they're going to go to networking events, they're going to look on LinkedIn, they are going to do the search for you. 
Rock says, I feel like the main issue is that she's looking for the in the wrong bubbles uh, to find someone who matches her bubble and then getting feedback from a bunch of other bubbles. Actually, that's a lot of it, too, is that, well, OK, so what bubble would she be in? How does it work out? Discord said, I'm sorry, I just bombarded you with gifts. Discord says, how does one know for sure if they're no they're a normie? I hate the idea of being one of those people who says they're not normal when in reality they're just a little insecure and mentally unwell. I think the reality is is that there is a normal for every bubble and are you the normal in your bubble and um, I think that's how I would ask because everyone's normal in a different culture, in a different country, in a different religion, in a different family. I mean normal is sort of the expectation. Are you the expectation? And I'm definitely not the expectation, right? I'm crossing barriers left and right, ma'am. But everyone has a different expectation. So, you know, I'm normal in my bubble, which is the one I curated. So that makes sense. But I'm also, I feel very normal every day. But I'm obviously like abnormal to most bubbles that I interact with. I stand out in other words, you know. But what is normal? Is this girl normal? Is she a normal person? She feels like a normal for the category of woman she is. The single at 38 high strong atypical all of that stuff you know oh look the kink consulting coach says outsourcing is 100% how I live my life too I rarely wash my own hair now I'm I'm definitely not styling it it's kind of cringy comment okay and that is why I would so we're all normies in someone's bubble I think so like I would say so right if you fit into the I would say if you're the normal in the bubble if you're the expectation then yeah I, I think you kind of are like normal is just I don't even believe in like an objective normal right so excited about matchmaking I would I not outsource this y'all let somebody who is an expert in this space do the heavy lifting of the part of this process that isn't about building meaningful connections. Yeah, but didn't they say they couldn't do it for you? Basically, it's like ordering Uber Eats and then every time they bring you the food, like you throw it all away and then they're like, hey, I can't keep getting you Uber Eats for you. Like you don't want to eat anything. And it's like, what do you mean? Aren't I worthy of eating? And it's like, you know what I mean? She just isn't, I don't get it. <laughs> Find a matchmaker that works for you then. Have them source the potential suitors for me. Weed through the weeds, essentially. Finding that diamond in the rough for me. Or bring me the guys that you think are a right fit for me, and then we'll go from there. Let's make sure that they are looking for marriage. <gasps> so true, Maddox. Yes, we're all normies in someone else's bubble, and in others, we're the exceptional, and in others, we're the bottom of the barrel. No, that's so true. That is so, that is the most honest. That's what this lady is in radically accepting. You're not a winner to some people, bro. You're literally the nightmare. I am someone's living nightmare and I don't like, great, don't date me, right? Like everyone is someone's living nightmare and then you have to decide for the lifestyle you're living, the person you are, have you reached a, a threshold of least healthy and functional, like good enough, right? There's like a good enough of healthy guys. It's like, it's like, okay, there's like a healthy enough and that's going to be dictated on your values, right? But like you have to match up with the right person. Okay, so this lady, go. Let's see. Back home doing my nighttime. It says you can't be a leader and want a leader. An alpha man wants a soft woman. And skin routine with the tips y'all gave me and adding in retinol slash tretinoin, whatever you want to call it. And we're going to address this comment because this is wild. I already put on my niacinicin, niacinicin, niacinamide. Why are they name things so difficult? Next, I am going to use my prescription tretinoin. Oops. Now that I'm home and not going to be in the sun for a few days, going to do like a little pea-sized. Yes, Mariah says she's just so corporate. I agree. Which like what corporate man wants a corporate woman? Some of them for sure. But all of them, like that's the thing is like I definitely, right? Like that has to be a thing. But who is he? Where is he? Where does he live? Dropish with that. And then I like to add a little squid drop. Okay, you can't be a leader and want a leader. It's called wanting an equal. It's called wanting a partnership. It's called wanting teamwork and going through life where you are one and one, not one and two or two and one. Okay. Both people can have leadership. The dilemma is, is like my partner and I are equals. We have very different personalities. I'm much more abrasive and much more aggressive. That's the dilemma. What about personalities? 
Like we're my partner and I do not have combative personalities because we're very different. Do you know what I mean? She made it sound like she wants somebody who's as combative as she is, which is like very difficult. My mom always said I had to marry a man that would soften me up. And I did. I married a man who was who was kinder and softer than me and like nicer than me in a lot of ways. Like he's a he's a much easier person that people can get along with than I am, right? Like I'm very abrasive. And so, yeah, like look at me now. I'm like, what? <laughs> so like does she understand that? She doesn't want a beta. Don't date a beta. Date somebody who's like softer, right? Energy in a relationship and have a successful relationship because you want people to lead in the areas that they have their strengths and others to lead where they have their strengths. Right? That's yeah. what it's all about. Okay, you all said I should put. Yes, but it's about personality, right? Am I crazy? My gold flakes on before my moisturizer. So this is a big step. I'm so used to putting it on the end, but I'm going to try it. I'm almost out. I did add some. I noticed Sephora's having a sale. All right, putting this on my gold flakes. Let's rub it all in. I don't know. I just think. There isn't any woman on earth that needs to soften or make herself less of who she is to make a man comfortable. For if sure. that's the case, the I agree. Is not the man for her. I agree. Not the man for her. If I'm too much, go find less. Go find less. We are going to add. She's missing the point. I agree with this, but that's the dilemma is like most a lot of couples, I won't say most, a lot of couples are really complimentary because they're a good balance and they help fill in the gaps. So if you have two people who are exactly the same, I find it to be a little bit more difficult, but I'm sure it's possible, right? My tried and true CeraVe now. Okay. Oh, open. Let's add this on the top, creating that final layer. Oh, so goopy. I love it. Okay, ladies, let's stand united and be strong, competent women who have hearts of gold, who allow themselves to be in relationships where it's a partnership and we are with our equals and we allow each other to grow and be challenged in the ways that make sense. So I agree with this. I think I have a partnership. I think my partner and I challenge each other in ways that are reasonable. But again, we have a like a yin and yang, like somebody said in the comments, we have a balance. You know what I mean? And I feel like she doesn't know how to have balance because she thinks she's everything. <laughs> I think she thinks she is everything that you need in a partner and therefore her partner should be everything you need in a partner versus like, yes, I I have a partner who's everything I need in a partner, but what I need is someone who fulfills and like makes up for my gaps and I make up for his in a lot of ways because we're teammates, right? Like you wouldn't have a whole team of like QBs, bro. You need like a wide receiver in defense and offense. Like you need fucking other people on the football team, my bros. So again, not to be because I'm gay, so I don't really understand sports, but but I'm just saying, like, if you have a team of quarterbacks, like it's kind of not the point. Right. You need other people on the team. So, again, I think she's right in philosophy and values. You need a person who's a teammate. You need to be on the same team. You need to be both putting in 100 percent. But again, what does that look like in practice? If you're saying I also want a man who's as dominant as I am, I think you can find maybe it's possible. I'm not going to say it's not possible. But I'm going to say that she's probably missing the point a little bit. Also, she has a cross in her bio. And I'm not sure if that's to the reply. I think that's – never mind. Never mind. She doesn't have a cross. It was a reply to the person she was replying to who has a cross in their bio. Never mind. Okay. If you were gay, you'd know football more. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> Stop. Gatekeep, gaslight, girl boss type of vibe. Yeah. And what are you going to do, right? Some people are like this. And the question is, like, are you like this? Because, again, it's like <sighs> when you're having this relationship with the self, you have to be willing to say, when I say I want a teammate and someone who's equal, am I saying I want myself? Because I didn't marry myself, but I married somebody who I feel does as much as myself. I feel like my partner puts in just as much as I do, which I think in girl boss circles gets mistaken for like one to one. But it shouldn't be one-to-one -one with the details. It should be one-to-one -one with the energy, right? Like he puts in 100%, I put in 100%. But it's not like we put in the same income. We put in the same this. We put in the same this. And look at her. Look at her saying she wants a man who makes the same amount or more than her. Why? 
how in the world is that like reasonable or valuable? Like, why is that valuable? You know what I mean? Like, why? Why is that a necessity? Who taught her that? Why does she internalize that value? Right? Because the only men I hear about who are also in favor of that are men who do not want women like this. So what bubble is she thinking of? Who raised her? Why did she come to this conclusion? That's what I want to know. In my head, in real life while I'm dead, my belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine, not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense. I've been nothing but blessed, so why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking, yeah. Thank you.